Howdy folks, Sapper here, a.k.a. Sean, and I'm bringing you World in Flames, Victory in the West, September, October 1940. It is impulse number nine, and it is an Axis impulse. And the last time we met our band of intrepid heroes, depending on which side you are on, our band of intrepid German heroes is advancing slowly upon Paris. They've managed to take over Lil Lily. We've almost got Metz surrounded, and we are knocking at the door of Paris. Now, let's look at the flip side. Our intrepid band of French and Commonwealth heroes. Well, the Commonwealth is no longer on the, the uh, continent, because they've all been booted off. But our intrepid band of French heroes continues to hold on to France. Continues to hold on to Metz. And unfortunately, it's probably only a matter of time before... Those two cities fall. So we'll see what happens. Um, so the cubes just represent my German movement. Um, weather is fair again. So it's definitely going to be good for any kind of offensives that I perform or any kind of attacks. I'm not doing the offensive points in this particular game. I don't, I'm not familiar with them yet. But uh, so I've, I've conducted movement. Um, probably the big move there is I move von Bach closer. I really want to I want to get Metz. And then I've just, you know, kind of moved some units around and, and gotten people into place, gotten units into place that I think can. Can. Uh, be most effective. So what I think I'm going to do. So I definitely want this guy out of the way. And I definitely want this guy out of the way. So what I'm going to do... Let's see, what is this guy? He is a four. Four, five. Uh, so we've got 14 to four. If I don't use run stat, that's 14 to four. So that's three to one. Mm, what do we have here? So that is 17, 24. If I use that, it's 25. That's 5 to 1. If I use these three to attack that headquarters, and then I could use that armor to... Hmm. Okay, what I think I'll do is I'll use this one. So that's 15, 22, what did I say that was? 4, 22, that's 29 to 4, so that is 7 to 1. I think I'll do that, I'll do the 7 to 1. Um, I'm not going to do the blitz, 7 to 1 gives me plus 14. Actually, if I do the blitz, then... You know what? I'm not going to do anything special. I'm going to use the assault column. I get plus 14. So that is 24 maximum results. So this guy is definitely destroyed. Um, it is a green result. So that means all of these guys remain unflipped. So now we have to figure out who goes where. You'll run in. And we'll do that. Let's do... Just to remind myself that these guys have committed themselves. And then we'll go here. So that is 15, 17, what, 32 to 5. That's 6 to 1. 6 to 1 odds gives me plus 12. You know what? Do I want? I might want to blitz on this because then he could. How much armor do I have here? I have two stacks of armor. I think I'm going to do the blitz. That way, I will get a chance to do the uh, breakthrough. So by doing blitz, that gives me. What did I say? I think I said I was at six to one. 
17 plus 15 is 32. 33, 34. Oh, I need one more odd. One more. I can commit an airplane if I want to. Mm, now, 6 to 1 gives me plus 12. Plus, I have the 2 armor, so that is plus 14. Mm. I will do that. I will use the blitz column. Plus 14. Let's make sure this is not a city. All right, that is clear. So plus 14, and that's easily the, the best result that you can possibly get. So I can adv advance one and then advance a second. Do that, and then these guys can advance right there. So that's pretty much the results I was kind of hoping for, was something like that. Uh, do I want to attack here? That's 11. No, nope, I need one more factor. To be able to get a good one there. All right, I th you know what? I think I'm going to call that good. All right, what is my odds? Um, if I roll a three or less, then the the September October um, turn will end. I'm banking that I'll get another. Uh, you know, the odds of the axis getting one more turn are kind of low because by the time it gets around to the axis again, I'll have to roll better than a five. So I'm looking at November, December. Hmm. Well, I think I will end it for them. Do I want to reorganize? Well, actually, what do we have here? Let me see. I've got one more option. So that's six. That's eight. Thirteen would be twenty-one to six. That's if I used uh, Von Bach. These guys would be halved, so that'd be two. That'd be two. So that's f that's four. 12, 25 to 6. That's 4 to 1. Let's give that a shot. We'll do 4 to 1. I can't use the blitz table because there is a factory there. So that's 4 to 1. That gives me plus 8. Um, with that minus... No, that gives me plus eight minus one because of the factor. So that's a plus seven. Let's do that. Plus seven. That's 15. 15 gives me two attacker losses, one defender loss. So not ideal, but he is out of there. I will choose to lose these garrisons. I cannot, actually, you know what? I can't advance after combat. I will do that. There we go. Hopefully I got most of that right, but there we go. So that's the axis turn. I'll go ahead and end it. Well, let's see. First of all, uh, three or less. September, October ends. I rolled an eight, so we continue on with the next impulse. I'll be back. All right, for the allied turn, all I did was I just flip-flop units. I just switched places with these two, so that gives me a nine in there instead of an eight. So... Factors matter, folks. Factors matter. Um, if I roll a five or less for the end of impulse, then September, October is over. And I rolled a five, so September, October is over. So I will go ahead and take care of all of that. 
and then we will see what happens next. All right, folks, so here is the end of turn stuff. I'll cover the production here in a minute, but just to kind of show you what the Germans have captured. I'm highlighting what the Germans have captured uh, with the cubes. So we've captured a total of six resources, um, three red factories, and three blue factories. The red factories can be added to the Germans' factory count. The blue ones cannot. And then um, the reinforcements that arrived, we had one mechanized infantry for the British, and we had one armor for the Germans. And now we'll kind of cover if I can remember exactly everything. So last turn, the Germans had 19 factories. Now they have 21 factories. They receive a total of, um, or they have a total of 20 resources at this turn. So 20, all 20 of those resources can be converted into build points. So 20 times 0.75 is 15. We had 17 resources left over from last turn, so that gives us a total of 32 build points. The UK just gets a flat six build points. And then France had one build point left over from last turn. They have a total of uh, five resources that they could... No, excuse me, I think it's seven resources. So seven times 0.75 gave me five build points added to the one save so they have six six build points basically um there's only two turns left so i really don't think i'm pretty sure yeah i mean i, I don't think i'm going to build anything honestly i will go over here and look and th these aren't so we still have all those, all those units can be added to the force pools. But if we look, so infantry is really the only thing that I can build because you see mechanized infantry takes three turns to build. Motorized infantry takes three turns to build. Headquarters takes three or four turns to build. Armor takes four turns to build. So the only thing I can build is plain leg infantry. And I'm pretty sure now, of course, I say this before I've rolled weather, but I'm pretty sure that I will have Paris captured before January, February 1941. I'm pretty sure I can get Paris captured um, in November and December. Of course, the weather will will pretty much determine whether or not that happens. So we'll definitely see. But I'm not going to bother building anything because this game is pretty much over. If things looked a little bit different here on the board for the rest of France, I might think about building things. But, you know, just for the sake of easiness i'm not going to build anything and then let's do let's do we did reinforcements lending resources there are none so we'll do initiative so the germans get plus one to initiative and they win, so it's six to two. So the Germans have the initiative, which is a good thing. And then we'll go ahead and roll for weather. We'll go over here. Weather is a five. So we are in November, December, so it is going to be rain. So that's definitely, definitely not good, but Having done this last time, we kind of know what to expect, but we've pretty much got Paris surrounded anyway. And I think it's, yeah, each, each advance goes two spaces down the line. So we will check for weather again, not on three, but on five. 
All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and clear all these cubes and stuff off, and then I'll get ready to conduct some attacks. All right, so on the axis turn, I just conducted one attack. So we had this guy here, this 3-2, he was in that hex. These guys were here, these guys were here, so I attacked with these two. I did remember to do my um, minus one attack odds and also included the penalty for the rain. So I ended up overall with five to one odds. Rolled good and eliminated that guy. So what I think I'm going to do is after movement and everything, I just move some guys around. I think I'm going to end the turn before I attack on Paris because it's going to be like a three to one maybe. Or it's going to be a four to one with like very low die roll modifiers. And I'm just not willing to do that at the moment. So I think I'm going to let another turn go by. And then kind of see what happens, what develops from there. All right, so we're going to conduct the big, the big attack on Paris. Um, I did roll snow for the weather, which you can see right here is supplies. Three hexes attack, attacks are at minus two odds. However, you can ignore that if um, half of your if half of your units are winterized, at least half of your units. So the winterized units are the ones that are in white. So we have a total of two, four, six, eight, ten units attacking, and we have one, two, three, four five, six units are winterized. So that's more than half. So I don't have to do the minus two odds. So the odds ended up being nine to 59, which is basically six to one odds with the 50% remainder. Let's see if we can get the push from the, we do not. So we are at a plane six to one. Six to one gives us plus 12, but it is minus three because there are three factories in there. So that is a plus nine. Plus nine. Ugh, man, can we get any worse? 13. So no result, no result on either side. That is about the freaking garbage result, man. Ah, it's just so frustrating. That is frustrating as you can believe right there. <sighs> All right, so let me see. Well, ah. All right, so what can we do to reorg? He can reorg those four. He can reorg those four. It's going to take me three headquarters to reorg all this stuff. So I'm going to have to use him. He can do four, so that would be those two. This is just in the hopes that we still have a couple of impulses left. Is he here or here? It doesn't matter where he was. So those two stay. We can do three. One, two, three. Yep. So Von Lieb. Oh, he's a range of two. One, two. Oh, I'm, I was about ready to flip them. They're already flipped. I'm just trying to avoid not flipping them. So that's those two and those two. And then if Gadarian does it, then he can get those two and those two. All right, so it now goes to the allies. No, we don't have to roll for the uh, end of impulse because it's a minus one. Now, add two to the next impulse of the weapon. Okay, never mind. So we don't do that. So then it's a negative one. That doesn't happen. We advance it three spaces. The allies are going to go. They're not going to do anything. 
If I roll a two or lower, it'll end the turn. So that's a three, that didn't happen. So now we are on axis impulse again. Let's do the weather roll. We want to roll low. A zero, that's the same thing I rolled last time. It's snow again. So we get, one, this is our one last shot right here to do, actually we can do some movement. What is, all right, it doesn't look like there's any movement cost associated with being in the snow. So we can do this right here. We will slide this way. We will slide them in there. All right, so I did the odds. I have enough winterized units. Of course, these are all halved because they're attacking across the, what river is that? The Seine. So all of these are halved because they're attacking across the Seine River. But I do have enough winterized units. It's going to work out to be 7 to 1 odds. There's a 10% chance that I can bump it up to 8 to 1 odds. That didn't happen. Roll to 5. And so let me see, seven to one gives me plus 14, which is a plus 11 because of the three factories in Paris. Let me just double check there's three factories in Paris. Yep, there are three factories in Paris. So this is a plus 11 to the die roll. There we go. That is the result I'm looking for. So basically two units are eliminated. There's a shatter. Boom, Paris has been Paris has been liberated if you're the Germans. <laughs> All right. Who gets the honor of getting moved into there? I don't even know. Oh, the Deutsche Afrika Corps wants to go in there. We'll get some armor driving into. And then of course the first first corps since you're the you're the biggest. All right, now I need to read about these crazy Vichy rules and then see what happens from there. All right, so I have looked up the, uh, so I've captured Paris. I decided, you know what, I think this is good. The game is probably over. So adding up the victory points, here's the victory point chart. Let's see if we can get a better view here. So here's your victory point conditions. Um, so if we look over here, three points for Paris and each enemy headquarters. So I think that gave me a total of 15. Two points for Amsterdam, Brussels, and each enemy armor and mech core destroyed. So we got Amsterdam and Brussels. And then armor and mech. I... I I don't remember if I was keeping count for the, the Germans, but so I guess there was three destroyed. The French destroyed four. They got lucky on a couple of those rolls or the allies destroyed four. Um, one victory point for Antwerp, Lille, Lyon, Marseille, and Metz. I got three of those cities and then one VP per British unit destroyed. And I think I had six at last count. So it ended up 34 points for the Germans and then France had eight, or the Allies had eight, and then the game ended on November, December, so the Allies get six victory points for that, so it's 34 to 14. Well, you can't even see all that. 34 to 14, you divide 34 by 14, I get 2.4, so it looks like I got a draw. Of course, there is a chance that if I kept playing, I could probably drive to Lyon and get a point there. I could probably drive to Marseille and get a point there. That two more points. That's 36 points. Uh, it's debatable. You know, I think that that ending the game turn or ending the getting capturing Paris sooner would have definitely made would have made the difference. So anyway, I think that 
that's going to wrap it up for this this uh my first play of world in flames the uh, victory in the west scenario i really had fun that was a lot of fun um and now, I mean, I'm, I've been thinking, do I want to just roll right into the next thing with this? Uh, I think I want to play something else, but I'm telling you, this game is probably going to get back out onto the table pretty quick because I really had a lot of fun playing it. I want to play a bigger scenario and see how that works out. Of course, I still have a lot of counters to clip. Um, so I've been working on, working on clipping counters. Those are all clipped. This tray is almost done. I think the bottom two trays, yeah, that's Italy. America is underneath. I'm end up spilling all this. So Italy and America are done. I don't think anything else is done. Yeah, that's China and all the small Asian countries. Let's see what else we got. That looks like Russia. Russia needs to be clipped. What are these guys? Um, these look like... I think these are the Central American. Yeah, Venezuela, Chile. So these are the um, Central and South Americans. And then that is, wait a minute, who is the red? I think that's Russia. No, that's, yeah, that's Russia. So who is that red? Silly me, red is Japan. So red's Japan. I'm so used to Russian being red in a game. So that is Russia. So I still got quite a few counters to clip. And then, of course, I've got divisions in flames that I, I think I'm going to add the next time I play. I'm going to add divisions in, in flames. I have not determined. Let's see what else we have here. So I have not determined we've got we've got planes and flames. So that just adds more aircraft. So that's three counter sheets. Territories and flames. This is just I think like the it looks like Yeah, the territories are just the small guys, the little guys that are going to play. Yeah, I mean, you've got a territorial guard for Northern Ireland and South Africa. Just just some of the smaller guys, would these would these really make a difference? I mean, look at the, the values of these units. They're pretty small. So I don't know if I'll do territories and flames. Ships and flames. I think this is all ships and flames. This just adds more ships. Basically, every, every named ship that fought in World War II is represented... Yeah, every named ship. That's just crazy. So I don't think I'll get around to doing ships and flames, but I think at a minimum I do want to do divisions because that will allow you to put one more unit in a hex. You'll be able to put two core in one division per hex. So you'll get you'll get some higher attack values, even though these numbers are pretty small. It looks like twos and threes. You're only going to add two or three attack factors, but like engineers will help you out if you're in a city hex or whatever. So, definitely going to add this. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I really, I really enjoyed playing that World in Flames. It, you know, it's a little bit daunting at first, but once you get, uh, once you get a, several impulses down, it's not too bad. Of course, I haven't even tackled, like, the deep naval rules yet, and there's so much more to air power. So this was a good starter scenario because it covered all the, uh, it focused mostly on land combat. But I think if I uh, take on another scenario, it's definitely going to, you know, strategic bombing will come into play and those kind of things. So it'll definitely ratchet up the intensity a lot. But this was a good, good beginner scenario. I really enjoyed it.
but uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching.